camera to Sharon. Bear with me, guys. <laughs> I do my best. I know I'm not Kyle or Chris. <laughs> I can't imagine how both of those got, got off on the same day. I can't imagine how that <laughs> happened. <laughs> but anyway, considering my son is my slave for life, I you know would have thought he could have been here. Um, anyway, okay, so it's Sharon and Judy, and Dudley is in the store, so, um, we're, <laughs> welcome to Facebook Live this morning. Caitlin's watching from the beach. Oh, <laughs> Caitlin, that's great, awesome. So, we are live from Artistic Artifacts, I'm Judy Gula, and we are in Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, we do have an online web store, artisticartifacts.com, and we have a brick and mortar store that is open from Tuesdays through Saturday. And today we're going to show you and talk about some ATCs. But first, we want to bring you up to speed on some things that have been happening. Thursday, we had a comment sold, and we created fat quarter bundles, which we then, Chris, fabulously made some samples very quickly with some of our fast quarter bundles. They are on comments sold, artistic artifacts comments sold. The best way to get there, and Sharon's gonna show you some other packs and some threads that we have. The best way to do this and shop on comments sold, because this gives you access to a lot of one-off things, first time, um, you know, you get first dibs on some of this stuff, is to shop on our app. So if you go to your app store, whether you have an Android or an Apple, and search for Artistic Artifacts and download that, that is gonna be the easiest, fastest, quickest way to get ahead of some of these one-off items. So these special items we launch on Comments Sold first, we, they may or may not sell out, they may or may not be available in the store or online going forward. So that is a great way to find out about that. So Thursday, we had this Fat Quarter collection that was designed by the staff here and all of the team members have their own collection and it was a lot of fun and I don't as a business cut fat quarters because we just never had the manpower to do it so um, some people may know that I have a little bit of a reputation <laughs> about that um, we cut half yards and up and and that's so this is on top of that a really special thing then um, we have the Facebook Live this morning. We have, I think it's May 12th, um, and we do have a calendar on our website that shows some of these events for you. We're gonna do another comment sold, meaning it's gonna be seven o'clock on Thursday, and it's a how do I use it? This is a program that we started many years ago. Um, the pandemic stopped it, of course, and so we're trying to figure out how to do it in person as well as on live. So that is gonna be about working with printables. The next comment sold, we skip weeks, so it's every other week, is uh, gonna be a collection of Indian textiles that we have. Um, that's gonna be, again, a lot of one-off things, scarves, uh, some clothing, some textures, some canthas, that type of stuff. Um, the other thing next Saturday, I can tell you what next Saturday is going to be, which is usually a guess. We're going to talk about our, my little weavings that I've been doing. I seem to have collected a whole lot of um, stitching hoops, and I actually don't use a hoop when I stitch. So we've done some of these, and any of you who can come to the store, we're hanging these in the window. Jen started that uh, window display with some of these. So I'll show you how I did these. They're lots of fun. All right. So today is ATCs. ATCs are artist trading cards. This is a program that is like having a very unique business card that artists traded when they saw each other, whether they went to conferences or retreats or that type of stuff. It was a trade, it was a really cool business card. Started mostly in the mixed media, meaning paper and glue and pictures and stuff. Here's a couple, Sharon did this one with an old vintage picture. This is, Diane, um, what, Diane. Um, so those are kind of mostly paper. Um, this is a cross into paper and fabric um, by Crystal. And then of course, 
we here believe that if it works on paper, it works on fabric. So many of the ATC trades that we hold when we have jams that meets, okay, so jams is a group, a community that meets and are, we're gonna have our first in-person meeting since the pandemic on May 15th here at 1.30 at Artistic Artifacts. And they do an ATC trade in the, and before the meeting starts. So a lot of our ATC trades are gonna be fabric. And, and it doesn't, you know, fabric or paper, that's what's kind of cool about this group is because it is mixed media and fabric. It's not just all quilters, it's all quilters and paper makers and painters and, and bag makers. And, and they, we are able to really trade some interesting ideas and have them translate. So the community is very strong in encouragement and trying things different. So if I was at a retreat, I would go up and say, do you have an ATC, artist trading card? I would like to trade with you. And on the back of the trading card is kind of your calling card. So this one happens to be from Liz Kettle. This is the year, this is the name of her card. As a title, she happens to have a quote there. And so that would be her trade. And she, this one is done with a print and then it's just fabric loosely stitched um, there. Um, this looks like the thread bin. You know, when you have all those cutoffs, we put them in a jar, and when the jar is full, you can pull them out and do some gritting under netting and things, so that's great. And look at this chenille one here. Um, let's see, here's some hand stitching that's been applied to a card. This is a mixture of paper and fabric. This is Diane. Etta. Etta. This is Etta. Um, this is another one that I did, you know, quick. I don't know that I ever named mine. Oh no, my duct tape fell off. <laughs> <laughs> one time I couldn't find anything to put on the back, so it was duct tape. So every, most of them all have something on the back of them. Cherish. Here's a Linda. Here's a fun one with the man with the hat. Um, Jocelyn and Suzanne sometimes paint theirs. Um, these are Teresa Martins, which are some of my favorites. And that Teresa Martin is who inspired me for my, um, my ATCs to show you today. So ATCs have to do with the size. So it's two and a half by three and a half. And then, and my technique is very similar to how I make my postcards. So I start first with steam a seam. So this is steam a seam light. And the reason why I start here is because this is kind of sticky. So it allows you to place fabric down and pull it up and it's two sided paper. So you have paper here and you have paper here. All right, and it's very sticky. So normally I work with a big piece, but this just happens to be enough. And um, hold on, I'll be right back. I didn't go, I just had to <laughs> get my stuff. All right, so this is my scrap bin that kind of I hold on for my, pet, my they're all my salvages. So, what I can do is I can put that down here, and if I don't like it, I can pick it up and move it. But um, most of the time, I'm just trying to scrap things together. And so you just lay them down. Once, you know, I, I, I have this reputation. Give me your salvages, I'll figure out what to do with them. So salvages turn up on my desk. Um, I just, they become, so I, I search in life for sel what to do with salvages. I love the names on them. I don't really worry about how, you know, sometimes I worry about whether they're color coded, sometimes I don't, um, depending on what I'm doing. So, and usually I work in big sheets. So you multiply, if you're making postcards, you know, how many postcards, so your sheet is usually that size. If we're doing ATCs, I cut these in advance so that I would make the four ATCs. So I do try to do a little bit of math before I'm starting. Kathy know. Buck is asking, how many of those bags do you have? <laughs> Kathy? <laughs> um, I, I 
actually I've done really good. I have I have just a couple of them. <laughs> and I I do like these zip bags. So um there, there, we have a few of them that we sell on our side. They're Alvin bags. They're, I guess you could use a Ziploc sandwich bag, but they look small, um, even the gallon size ones. So this is where it goes in here. So this is all salvages. And I'll show you, I use the salvages on um, my embroidery hoops as well. So then I would take this and iron it. And then I would peel the back side off and it's going to adhere to Peltex. Now, this took me years, what I'm gonna tell you, it took me years to figure this out. Peltex is a Pellon product. Peltex 70 has no fusible on it. Peltex 71 has one <laughs> side fusible. Peltex 72 has two sides fusible. I know, I know most of you probably knew this way ahead of me, <laughs> but it took me a long time. And I don't really, I just use what I have because I'm putting a lot of fusible on it. This fusible is a little bit heavier. So if you can get the non-fusible, that's fine to use because the, you're gonna fuse this to this. So then I iron this on and I'll cut it sometimes two things. I can actually take care of doing my embellishment and my stitching multiple, so this would be three ATCs. And I would do free motion. This is when I pack, practice with my Bernina Stitch Regulator and I do some stitching um, on that. And let's see, oh, I have another one over here. I can show you a little bit. Okay. I save everything. So this is one that I've cut apart, but I, I worked this large and kind of rolled it because it gets stuck, but you can see I was trying patterns because normally I just draw circles. Seem to do really well at circles. So this, I have a whole sheet that's done and I stitch, it's practicing Bernina Stitch Regulator, it's practicing with different threads. Most of the time I'm using a size 50 thread. I really love size 12, but I can't move as fast with that one. So that's what that looks like, and then I cut it up. All right, everybody with me so far? Yep. Got lots of little hearts flying by, people from all over the country. Okay, awesome, great, welcome. All right, so these were, um, as I said, were inspired by Teresa Martin. So I was like, okay, you know, my ATCs are kind of wimpy sometimes. But I'm going to really take something that is precious to me, and I'm going to make an ATC. So this is the background is Tilda. So you can see here, that's Tilda. I glued them on to, I, I didn't have Peltex at home, so I just took an interfacing. You can see how precise I am. I use what I have. And I cut apart a hand-dyed doily. I have some silk paper here that I usually keep in a drawer and I have some sorry silk. So I did some quick stitching with my Bernina Stitch Regulator and then I hand stitched beads on. I don't glue beads, I hand stitch them. And honestly, I was surprised at how fast it went. Okay, so these are all ready for their backs. And did I do a back? Let me see, okay. So this one, I took a piece of cardboard that was already cut, and these stamps are old. I don't know what who is still making ATC stamps, and you don't have to have them. You can put this on there, you can just write your name on it, what the year is. Sometimes people will say, okay, well, I made 20 of these, so this is one out of 20, kind of like a signed piece of artwork. Suzanne? You, your couple questions. Your ATCs can be identical. They can be a set. Uh, they can be uh, thematic, like what Judy's doing here. They're very similar. They're clearly of a set. They can be one-offs. And generally, your trades are going to focus on your group. So, yeah. um, like, we're part of an exchange where they'll tell you to make 15. That means you'll get 15 back. Um, so, okay, just uh, have some fun and play with them. Try some different things. And then 
I know you're close enough that you can come to jams on the 15th. There you go. So you can come and see what it's all about. 1.30 on the 15th. So that's that's how this one is going. And you can tell, I again, just play, just have fun. You know, this is not precision sewing. This is mixed media. This is go with the flow. Um, she says she's planning to come. Okay, awesome, awesome. Suzanne, let's say make 15 for jams and yeah. that, that should, that'll, that should work. <laughs> and I'll have 15 of mine. Whoa. <laughs> so I'll get one of yours. All right. So let me, let's keep on track with the sewing one here. Now this is, when I say I don't pay attention to my coloring, um, I don't do that all the time. So this one happened to be this. And it's kind of beige because I wanted to be able to do, have the background be not so loud and there. So that's what I used for these three. So today, what machine we're using a Bernina 480. And the reason why- I need you a little I, closer. The reason, no, or this way, okay. whichever way you want. <laughs> okay. The reason why need to get you. <laughs> I picked the Bernina 480 today was, um, this machine, you know, so it goes three series, four series, five series, seven series, eight series, just like BMWs. This is because that was my previous life with BMWs. So everything is associated with BMWs. So you got the three series, which is the beginner BMW, which is what we had, was the little beginner co uh, convertible. Then as you go up, you get more power, you get more um, bells and whistles, you get more powerful, and they tend to be more expensive. So I sew on the 7 Series every day. That's what I have. And I love it. It's fabulous. And I've been a Benina girl since 1978. I think I tell everybody that. Um, so, but what I really wanted to show you was you can have a 4 Series machine, a 480. It doesn't, and you can use a Bernina stitch regulator. So Bernina Stitch Regulator is this little free motion computer that's right here that's a foot. So I'm gonna take it off and show you. So here's your, here's your foot. Here's where your connector is to get it onto the machine. And then this is what plugs this computer into this computer and helps you with the Bernina Stitch Regulator. So this doesn't come with this machine, but you can buy it as an option. And they are the foot of the month in May, so they're 25% off. And you plug it in. That's a great deal. Yeah, it's awesome. So, um, and I just, I, I think some of these big machine um, bells and whistles, you know, you need to know that you can add them. They may not come in the box with the machine, but they're compatible. And when it says it's compatible, it means that you can add it on. So I thought that that was a really cool thing. So Diane Block says, oh, yes, you can get one. <laughs> Lots of exclamation points. <laughs> yes. yes. Diane loves her 480. Absolutely loves it. So I'm going to just show you how easy it is to make these if I can find a pair of scissors. This is all sari ribbon. We sell multicolored, um, multi fabric colors. Sari, we sell dyed sari. Those are all on our website. So this is where my color is going to go. So I'm going to lay. I uh, see how precise I lay them down there. Very precise. Okay. Now, I have to, what this doesn't give you is an automatic foot that where you can do that electronically, but that's okay, we've been trained a long time. And so I'm just going to lock down my stitch and, sorry. It's okay. Usually my scissors are a lot shorter. Okay, so I just kind of took my thread off so it doesn't get all hung up. I put my, I had my needle down so it kept me in place. 
Do you want to discuss uh, your needle size, your stitch length, or any technical um, specs that you're doing right now? Okay, my needle size is a 90 because I'm using Peltex, so you want to have that go down. Uh, my thread is a 50. Um, my stitch is two inches, but it could be longer. Um, I just, that was what was on the machine, but you can definitely make it longer. So I've stitched down my two pieces here. I've just gone down one and up one. All right. Now, I'm not really good with pins, so I tend, I tend to just hold things. Okay. All right, so. All right, and I am just stitching over my hand side piece. I do have scissors, which is cool, but yes, I have to remember to put my foot up. So there you go. Okay, we're done. That's as fancy as it gets. But you know, my star of my show is my vintage piece here. Now, if I want to you have to be careful when you're pulling this out. You want to make sure that you're holding it here and pulling out because it is a little computer. It's telling me I need to pull my feed dogs back up. That's what that little message is. And I'm going to put a 20D on. And I'm going to grab a back. So I have my backs already printed. And, yeah, you know, they kind of fit, but it's okay. And I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna use my knobs here as the, my, my length, make it a little bit longer. Oh, I'm going shorter, there we go. You can see this is when this, this gets longer here. So now I've got four, but I can make it three. This, if I was using a zigzag, so those knobs are really nice, they're very handy. So, oh, foot. And that back is on cardstock, correct? Yes, it is. Suzanne's asking if it was paper or I like cardstock because I, um, and I use cardstock on my postcards also and not fabric because it just hides a lot more and it helps with um, keeping your postcard or your ATC stiffer so it doesn't get floppy. Again, I'm just so precise in my measurements. It's not about precision, it's about creating. So I have my back on, this is enough. One of the things when you're sewing cardboard is you can, or paper, you can see it start, the needle perfs it. So if you have them too close together, it's just gonna perf it and your paper's gonna come off. But that's all you need. So that is my vintage hand-dyed vintage postcards, ATCs. Now let me show you, because of course, you know, my one of my favorite tools are wooden printing blocks, and they are instant gratification. So I had a collage of fabric that was using this B kind of set up here. So I made a big strip and I cut them in ATC size and they're going to be my bees. So here's my wood block. So the name of this card is Bee Friendly. And this is so easy to do. So I have my pieces here. I have my wood block. I'm going to take a little bit of paint on a sponge, really not a lot. And I'm going to stamp. And here, press. I have a foam mat and it works. It's so cool, I love it. If you missed it, I'll do it again. And there's my bee. So wood block printing is really very easy. And um, I, I just, I'm so excited. Take another one while you're talking. I got, 
I mean, these I get scraps. I get everybody's scraps who's is in the store, and that's mostly how I get my fabric. That's why Kathy asked me how many bags of fabric I have. It's possible uh, they're scraps from the quilt that's behind uh, you, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> so that's exactly what this one is from. That is Caitlin's uh, bundle, bundle made into a quilt. Yes, and it's a uh, Villa Rosa pattern. It's wonderful. Very easy, quick. Both of these just shows you a little bit of the fabric that can happen and what the changes are. So, do we have any other questions, Sharon? Mm. Diane asked if you're heat setting your ATCs with your paint. Um, probably not. I think after you know, with the weather as it's getting warmer, you can you know it'll it'll set over time, and we're not washing it. So yeah. if I was washing it and, and stamping on a t-shirt or something like that, I would definitely heat set it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So how many local people do we have online and who's coming to jams on May 15th? <laughs> We're happy to get our community back together. And saw person. some locals. Hopefully we'll see them then. Okay. And we also have a fifth Friday, fifth Saturday sale going on where it's 25% off of our fabrics that we've cut. Our half yards, our one yards, our Australian, oh. our Tula. Judy Morrison is asking, where do you get the wood blocks? Here. They are here. <laughs> we, we bring them in from India. And we have collections I just and, uh, where you can buy them in these really nice handmade paper boxes. And there's some that are individuals. So they are all on our website, plus a little demonstration on what I just did as how simple and easy it is to do them. So anything else anybody can think of? Okay. I'm running on time. Thanks for joining us. We're glad to see you and have you be part of our community. Okay, I'm going to stop it. Go Push ahead. the red button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, finish. Well, I